Hello, physics team. Uh, I have made a graph already of some measurements that I made. I've got some circles that I made here in my hand just from old cereal boxes. Um, and so I made circles of various size, like here's circle A is the tiniest one and circle B is the next biggest and circle C and so on, all the way up to circle G. And you can see a data table that I made where I measured the diameter and I used this little measuring tape here, measured in centimeters. Um, I measured the diameter of each one by just measuring across. How far is it across one? And I also measured the circumference by wrapping the measuring tape. It's hard to do this and hold it up in front of the camera, but just by wrapping the measuring tape around and seeing how far around does it go. And so I measured in centimeters both diameter and circumference for these seven circles. And you can see I plotted my points on the graph of circumference versus diameter, and they fit a pattern that looks like a pretty good line. Um, you might, if you're already thinking about what's the relationship between circumference and diameter for a circle, you might not be surprised to think that that's a line. So what I want to focus on today is how do I compute the slope of a line and also some preliminary thinking about what's the meaning of a slope. So I added a best fit line to my graph and you can see that my line is very close to, but does not perfectly fit all of my data points. And, and those circles are pretty big for the size of the graph. Um, so, so those circles are pretty chunky and, and we can see like this last one, that data point is definitely below the line. The next to last one, that data point is definitely above the line. The next two next to last one for, for circle E is just a little bit below the line. And so I, my best fit line, the points don't go perfectly through. Now, if I want to find the slope of this line, uh, the first thing that I wanna be very clear about that might be different when we're doing science, that might be different from things that you may have learned in a math course, is I am absolutely not going to use any of those data points for calculating the slope of my line. And that's something that I'm going to be very insistent on. Um, I disagree with your work if you are using your data points to compute the slope of your line. The reason is because we know that our data points are imperfect. I did not feel super confident, especially like with circle G as I'm trying to wrap this thing around and not have it fall off. I am not confident that I made those measurements perfectly and I shouldn't be confident that I made those measurements perfectly. And this comes back to one of the points of why make a best fit line is that we know that our measurements are imperfect. These data points are imperfect. And if I measured them again, I'm probably going to find similar numbers, but not identical numbers to the ones that I put in my data table. So if my data is imperfect, then I should not be using imperfect points for calculating the slope of the best fit line. And the line is smoothing out and averaging out all of those, sometimes my number is too low, sometimes my number is too high. And I'm going to get a better value for slope if I don't use data points. And I do pick two points from the line. So I am not choosing two points of my red dots, I am choosing two points from the black line to calculate slope. Now, anytime you have ever calculated a slope, and I know you have calculated slopes before in assorted classes, whenever you're calculating a slope, you have to pick two points. 
And so I'm just going to drag these little light blue circles over two points on my line because a reasonable question that you might be wondering now is, okay, well, if I can't use the red dots for the data points, then what should I use? Oh, and I did want to address also, like in a math class, you might have in the past used the points from your data table, um, but that is operating on the assumption that those data points are exactly right. And we know when we're doing science that that is not an appropriate assumption to make. So in the context of science, no, we will never use points from the data table. So what I'm going to do Practically speaking, I could pick any two points on the line, but what I'm going to choose to do, I'm just dragging these little circles over the points that I'm choosing to care about because I need to read two points from the black line. So my personal choice is I tend to look for spots where the line passes like right through the grid marks because it's easiest for me to identify to pinpoint what's that number. So like looking at this first circled spot, it looks, it's not perfect, but it looks pretty close to me. I'll feel okay about using that one, that it passes through a point where on the horizontal axis, I'm going to one, two, three centimeters. And on my vertical axis for circumference, I couldn't go. So on the diameter axis, the horizontal axis, every box counts off one centimeter, but I don't have a big enough set of graph paper to, to do that with the circumference. So my circumference is counting by every five centimeters for each box. So this dot here is three centimeters of diameter, 10 centimeters of circumference. And I'm choosing that just because it passes really, 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 really close to the grid. So it's a pretty easy number for me to read. And the other spot that I picked out right here um, looks to me like it passes nicely through, this is 19 centimeters for diameter. And that is, that's two boxes higher than 50. So that's 60 centimeters of circumference. So when I'm finding a slope, I pick two points from the line, and then I need to calculate how much do I go up divided by how much do I go over. And so I go up from, I increase in diameter, that's my denominator, from 3 centimeters to 19 centimeters. And in terms of, oh, and maybe you've heard the term rise over run, rise, how much do I go up or down sometimes, divided by how far do I go over to the right. So my slope is... Oops, my slope is 60 centimeters minus 10 centimeters is the increase vertically on my graph. 19 centimeters minus 3 centimeters is how far I'm going to the right on my graph. So the slope is 50 centimeters divided by 16 centimeters. I went sideways by 16 centimeters to go up by 50 centimeters. And I can reduce that fraction from 50 centimeters divided by 16 centimeters to 3.1 centimeters divided by one centimeter. Now, you would be mathematically correct if you pointed out to me, hey, C car, you didn't really do this math all the way because you've got centimeters in the numerator and centimeters in the denominator, and you can divide those out. And I agree with you that you are mathematically correct when you say that, but. I am more interested, since this is a science class, I'm more interested in making conceptual sense than I am interested in math facts that I'm allowed to get away with. So is it a math fact I'm allowed to get away with to divide centimeters over centimeters and just say that the slope is 3.1? Sure, I can do that. But I don't want to do that because I want to care about the meaning. What does the slope mean? And when we're doing science, if we're just focusing on having an ability to calculate numbers and never caring about the meaning of it, then we're not doing good science. So one trick that I like to use as far as thinking about the meaning of the slope, which I really want to care about. When I'm thinking about the meaning of a slope, I use what I call for every language. For every one 
unit that I go over on the horizontal axis, which is my independent variable axis generally, then I have a corresponding increase of some amount on the vertical axis, the dependent variable axis. And I'm going to phrase that just like I put in red there on the right side of the screen. When I say for every language, I'm going to talk about for every one unit of my independent variable in the denominator. And that's why I'm also always going to write that fraction um, for a slope with a denominator of one unit. I'm always going to reduce, like I reduced down 50 centimeters divided by 16 centimeters. I reduced that down to 3.1 centimeters for every one centimeter. So coming back to this for every language, I'm just rephrasing this fraction into a sentence. And sometimes, yeah, it'll be easy and obvious to be able to figure out what the slope means, but there are going to be other times when the slope is not obvious at all in terms of what is this telling me? What does it mean for me? And so in that context, that's where the for every language becomes really powerful. So for every one centimeter of diameter, then this circle is going to have 3.1 centimeters of circumference. That's what that slope is telling me. By the way, if you know the relationship between circumference and diameter, then maybe you recognize that my measurements actually, any one individual pair of diameter and circumference measurements might be pretty decent, um, but the overall, um, the, the line is probably going to give me a better value um, than any one randomly chosen data point, uh, because you might be already aware that if I had measured even more accurately, and this was rounded off somewhat, um, but you would expect that um, for every one centimeter of diameter, a circle is going to have 3.14159, and I'm done, um, 3.142 whatever centimeters of circumference, because the number that we end up multiplying by diameter to get circumference is the number pi. And I got really, really close to that. Now, why did I round off? If you do the calculation of 50 divided by 16, you notice that I did cut off some decimals, but also I'm not confident that I measured that well, just because my calculator is going to spit out more digits of decimal places, doesn't mean that I have any real confidence that those are meaningful numbers, that there's any real accuracy there. So the meaning of the slope, I say a for every statement, for every one of my independent variable, this also comes back to why do we put independent variable on the horizontal axis? Because it's about the way we calculate slope. Because the horizontal axis is in the denominator of the slope for every one of the thing that I decided how it was going to change here's how much more I get of that dependent variable. This is why we put independent variables generally on the horizontal axis or what you would call the X axis. So thinking about the marbles in the experiment that you've been doing, if I make a graph of total mass of marbles in the cup versus number of marbles that are in the cup, I collected some data and I made this graph. And if I want to calculate this slope, then I need to pick two points on the line. And I want to pick points. I'm going to go here because that one looks like it passes right through that grid mark. And I'm going to pick another one. And the further apart these are, then the better I'm going to feel about it too. So I like having these far apart. Right here, that looks like it goes through the grid. So one thing I do want to be really specific about, the way I chose here, you can see it looks like there's a red data point right there. But I am not going to use the numbers from my data table for this red data point here, because do notice that the line does not have the exact same value right there as the exact, as the numbers that I measured for my red data point. They're a little bit different. And the point here is that I'm using the line, not using the data points.
And so I'm going over from two marbles to 21 marbles. And I'm going up from 15 grams to here is 85 grams. And so my slope, I can do 85 grams minus 15 grams is my numerator, my denominator 21 marbles minus two marbles, and I can subtract 70 grams divided by 19 marbles, which reduces down anytime I'm calculating a slope, I wanna reduce that down. I wanna have one unit in my denominator. So for every one marble, I'm going to let you think about what that for every statement tells us about the meaning of the slope. So I'm going to stop right there uh, and remind you that whenever I'm calculating a slope, I want to use points from the line, not data points. And when I am calculating that slope, I'm always going to choose to care about having units in both numerator and denominator because that helps me make sense out of a meaning for the slope. So enjoy calculating the slopes for your own marble graphs and enjoy figuring out why is there a y-intercept here that's not zero. Take care.